Welcome to the Heart of the City Regina Downtown Podcast Series, Episode 15. I will be your host, Dominica Deneb, Manager of Marketing and Communications for Regina Downtown Business Improvement District. Today, I'm joined by Beata Kowalski, owner of Fresh and Sweet, Fresh Carnival, and Valley Girls Catering. Welcome, Beata. Thank you. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing great. The sun is shining. Wonderful. I know that just, I think it just makes your day start off brighter. Sounds funny because obviously the sun is bright, but it does make it start off brighter, right? Like cheerful yes. and yeah, oh, feeling, like, feeling like you can accomplish so much with the sun shining rather than the rain. So yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, why don't we start off with just summarizing the businesses that you own? Because you do own a few and just let the listeners know um, a little bit about each of them. Okay. Uh, so we own um, Fresh and Sweet, Fresh Carnival, uh, we own Valley Girls Catering, so we operate the food and beverage at Sherwood Forest uh, Golf Club, and then we also have like a little food booth at Mosaic Stadium. Awesome, and you did mention here just before we pushed um, record that the golf course did open on the weekend, so how was that? Um, It was uh, different. Yeah. (laughs) It was really great to, uh, to be able to sort of operate and, uh, and and be there for the golfers and stuff um but it was uh it was definitely different so it's just it's a pretty big adjustment absolutely so the businesses that you own that are downtown just so listeners know are fresh and sweet and fresh carnival how long have you been downtown with these businesses um we've been downtown for just uh, i think just over 10 years i think this is our 11th year now so yeah. awesome and we st- it started with the uh, fresh and sweet and then you opened up fresh carnival a couple years ago right yes Yes. Awesome. Okay. So I know um, due to COVID-19 and the provincial state of emergency, um, you have been kind of functioning on a different business model than before. Did you want to elaborate a bit of how you had to adapt and what you guys are currently offering? Yeah, absolutely. Um, So, you know, when this all started, um, it was, uh, it was just, it was crazy. Uh, You know, the first day of it, uh, we just, all we got were emails and phone calls canceling all caterings, obviously, because nobody's having meetings or going, you know, to work or anything. So it was kind of, um, it was pretty crazy day where it was just like, oh my gosh. Okay. So, and like now, like looking back, I, you know, everything seems so clear in how we did it, but we were just navigating it, uh, day by day at the time. Um, so this, this all happened and we had no idea what to do. Um, but we just sort of kept taking a step forward because that's all we knew how to do. Right. So Mm -hmm. we adjusted it in that we, um, we just were were obviously only pick up, um, or take out and, um, and that, And that sort of kept us alive, but we really did take it day by day. It's like, are we open tomorrow? Yes. I don't know what's happening after that though. Right. Yeah. So. And have you had to adjust um, what you produce then daily due to just doing takeout and delivery now? Well, it, Oh, like the, the levels of course yeah. are completely different. Um, but the, you know, the big question for us from day one was, okay, do we, so many people were switching over, um, you know, how they were operating their business as far as what they were providing. And, um, lots of people went to like family meals or soups and things like that. And, you know, we really didn't, didn't, we really struggled with that. We didn't know what would be the best plan, but I just felt like if we just stick with what we're doing, because we really make yummy food. Um, and if we just continue on our path, just, I guess, at a different pace, you know, hopefully in the long run that will benefit us, um, by, you know, still providing our, our yummy salads or like our, you know, our sandwiches or, you know, of course, poutine and milkshakes and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so we just kept going with that, but I I, honestly, like it was, you know, we were taking it day by day and then it was like, okay, this week we're going to do this and we're okay. And we're going to like, I I swear I would be so surprised at the end of every day going, oh, wow, that, that was really busy. Like I didn't know that people would get our food, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, you're, you're unsure of what people feel comfortable doing, right? Like, do they feel comfortable coming in and picking it up or do they feel more comfortable having it delivered? Right? Like, I know that's a big question that a lot of people were wondering too, like, what does the community want and what's their comfort level with it? So that's great to hear that you were able to stick to, you know, your favorites, the the things that everyone kind of goes to, like goes to your establishment establishments for, 
and it's working for you still, right? You didn't have to adjust your menu. It just kind of kept putting out um, everything that everyone knows you guys for. Did you want to elaborate a bit more on your businesses? Because you talked about a few of the items that you do offer and just share with them the style of food that you offer. Because if you haven't been there before and you have, I would say like a palette that's very, um, you like stuff that's unique and you like the you know, full of flavors and the different like sweetness, I think you guys are definitely the place to go. So did you want to elaborate a bit on what you do offer? Sure. Um, you know, Fresh and Sweet has been around for like, again, almost 11 years. Um, and that, that side of the operation is, uh, you know, paninis and wraps um, and uh, really great salads. Uh, you know, we have all the yummy lattes and that kind of stuff. We make cupcakes and caramel apples. And on the weekend, we're you know, we're um, a brunch uh, spot typically when you can actually eat in a restaurant. Um, so we we do have some pretty like fun, weird things um, that I'm pretty proud of that we've developed <laughs> over the years. Um, you know, like a strawberry goat cheese waffle. Like that is so weird. It's a waffle with a very garlicky raspberry vinaigrette dressing and strawberries and feta and whipped cream and like candied almonds. And it's the most delicious and weird thing that you'll put in your mouth. Like it's <laughs> just, it, that, so that, so it's really fun. Like I, I really love um, that side of our restaurant. Uh, you know, you get, you know, it's, it's healthier and there's vegetables and stuff. And then you go to the fresh carnival side, which is uh, like, I basically I'm a child. And I think uh, that is where like, my soul just is so happy because there's not a lot of vegetables on that side. Um, we have, you know, poutines and burgers, uh, like handmade burgers, you know, uh, hot dogs and milkshakes and donuts, like fresh made donuts every day. So I, that's, that's like, that's where, that's where is my, that's my happy place. <laughs> oh, I can even tell in your voice when you talk about it, you just get so like overwhelmed with excitement. Right. And I love it. And I know like I, I am pretty careful with what I eat. So I just have to say like, if you go there, it's like, if you don't think about it, there's no calories, right? Like those, right. Shapes, yeah. There's no, yeah, it's, it's, it's all fat free in your mind. So it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hitting that sweet tooth and your, your inner child, like you said. So that's all right. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I have to, like, I have to make sure that everything's good. So, you know, it's my job. It's my duty in this world to make sure that we're providing some really delicious things. So I get to try that stuff all the time. Oh, I love it. And your staff must love it too. You coming up with different ideas and stuff. Hey? <laughs> yeah. So like just some of the crazy things we do is just, it's pretty funny. Oh, awesome. And so when it comes to staffing, then have you had to reduce the number of staff that are working with you? Or are you still able to keep most of them on during this? Um, well, it, it's similar, I think to everywhere. Um, when this initially hit, uh, we had to lay off almost everybody. Um, so most people were not comfortable at all working. Um, and so we lost, we were able to hold on to a couple of people who, you know, stayed a little bit and then, you know, moving into it even further, they got uncomfortable with working. So I, I can tell you, um, that we, we've never worked harder in our lives because, um, most, most everybody like is is gone like it's, it was just us for a long time so we've been working really hard for the past nine weeks and slowly we've been able to add people back um, you know as they felt more comfortable and we've been able to sort of figure out a system and and feel a little bit more comfortable in that we are getting we are getting business every day um, so we can sort of anticipate how many people we can you know we can add in or what we can do and really just like please help us um so we're we're so grateful to be able to add in some of our staff again that's wonderful to hear and you were mentioning different systems is there any systems that you think of off the top of your mind that you might want to share that might benefit others to hear um well you know the the thing is is that like at the at the beginning there was no like there's nothing yeah <laughs> like i guess I guess I, I, I'm really like, if I were to just be reopening right now, you're, you're navigating a whole new world, right? Um, because you, you haven't been sort of, um, going and growing with this. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that it is just take it day by day and, um, and do what you do consistently and trust that, um, 
trust that you'll be okay. Like you, you just, you, you, it's all trust. You have to just like forge ahead, um, without any real idea of how it's going to end, but like just faith, you just keep moving. Yep. Absolutely. And you mentioned a bunch of different challenges that you've been experiencing with the staffing. Um, obviously there probably was some financial challenges in there, just having to adjust to the amount of orders that are coming in daily and staffing and stuff. But through that, through the challenges, what, like, what are the positives that you're seeing that may come out of this? Um, I honestly feel like this was, uh, a really amazing gift. I am so grateful for this time. Um, because we've been in, we've had our company for 17 or 18 years. Um, and you know, we have been operating, um, and have been successful and we just sort of keep going without ever questioning how we're doing things or why we're doing things. And this really allowed us the opportunity to tear everything down to the very, like to the bones and we get to question everything, how we're doing it, why we're doing it. And so we're rebuilding from the ground up. And like, I could honestly, I could not be more grateful. Oh, that's great to hear. It's good mm-hmm. to see that, um, you know, I've spoke to a few businesses and some of them are retail that are going to start to reopen this week and see how that works, right? Like navigating this new world. Um, but most of them are seeing a positive in it too, right? Like as hard as it is and as much as it hurts right now and having to lay staff off and the challenges you're going through there, they all have mentioned some sort of positive that's coming out of this. Right. Um, and a lot of it too, is just the growth I think within our community and working together with others and just, um, having that voice where you feel comfortable to talk to others and help each other out. So I really appreciate the fact that you, even though there are challenges, you are seeing some sort of positives, right? Like within this world and with everything that we're going through. So that's great to hear. Um, with everything that we're talking about, where can people follow along and follow your business? So we should let them know uh, where they can. Yeah, we're on Facebook, um, you know, Fresh Carnival and Fresh and Sweet. Uh, we're also on Instagram. Um, and yeah, you can just follow us there. And then we post, we can entice you with all the pictures of our food. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And you guys post very regular, like you have like daily specials on some of your items too, right? So or, yeah, um, we're, we get a little crazy. Like we... <laughs> We try to have fun. Like if you can't have fun, then I'd rather just not do it. So um, we we get a little we get a little little crazy and have fun oh. and videos <laughs> and do all the things. So yeah. that's great. And I, one question I do want to ask because I haven't had anybody uh, mention it yet. But with having to go to takeout and delivery, did you have those options before, or was it something new that you had to kind of navigate and figure out? Like how do I get on these platforms and you know put myself out there? Well, we had uh, we always had you know, pick up or whatever, you know, uh, it's downtown. So most people are taking it out anyways. Um, and we had recently just got on skip. Um, it was a really great timing on our part. Um, so, uh, there's, you know, there's great things about having the, you know, delivery service like that. Um, and very bad things about it, (laughs) but, um, it's, uh, it's been, it's been good. Um, to have it during this time. Um, And yeah, we wouldn't have, I don't know. I don't know how we would have navigated delivery on our own um, had we not had it truthfully. Like I, it is, it's, it's overwhelming enough to have gone in every day and tried to figure out every day as well as trying to get somebody to take food Mm -hmm. or, you know, like all that stuff. It would, there's, we, I couldn't take that on at all. So I was very grateful for uh, Skip at the time, for sure. And is it easy just to go on and figure out how to add yourself or how would you, how do you recommend someone go about doing that? For, for which? Skip the dishes to get on there? Oh, I think you just download the app um, and you just, yeah. And then you can just go and find the restaurant or whatever and, and do it that way. Um, and we, we try to encourage um, our customers to just, you know, if, especially if you're at home, like, wouldn't it be nice to go out for five or six um, So we try to encourage people just to call in and we can get it made and then people will pick up and that's pretty awesome. But, uh, but Skip does offer delivery. If you can't, if you can't get downtown, then that's a really great alternative. Awesome. Love it. Did you have anything else you'd like to mention before we end today? Any other advice or anything you'd like to share with the listeners? Um, I, I think truthfully, 
we're all just, we're all navigating the unknown at this point. And um, you just keep moving. I don't, there's been no magic formula for us. We just kept doing what we felt was right. Uh, we could have been wrong. Um, I don't feel like we were. I feel like we did it exactly. Like I'm really glad how we did it, about how we did it. But um, I think you just keep forging ahead and do what you can. Awesome. Well, I love it, Beata. And I truly appreciate you coming on the podcast and sharing a bit of your experience, the challenges and both the positives as well. So I, I really appreciate your outlook and how you just keep moving forward with navigating the unknown right now. So thank you so much for coming on. Awesome. Thank you.